Hello, YouTubers, and welcome to a hangout you can't refuse. The Godfather, part one. Well, it's not actually called part one, but for the sake of this, I'll call it part one. Um, we are going to watch and comment on The Godfather Part 1. Myself and Jack McCulloch. Um, this is a, well, a classic piece of cinema, <laughs> undoubtedly. Whether you like the film or not, you have to kind of say that. Um, once again, as usual, this is non-profit. We are just fans of the material, just watching and commenting. So, you know, yeah. And um, th this is not a financial gain. If you want to watch the film with us, then feel free to plug in your DVD or Blu-ray and put your timestamp to zero. Um, so, Jack, is there anything you want to say before we start? Why did you treat my daughter so disrespectfully? <laughs> R-E-S-B-E-C-T, who knows what it means to me. <laughs> right. That's my Marlon Brando, my Marlon Brando impression. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is a it's three hours long, so it's it's gonna be a long one, but uh, stick with us because it's uh, it's totally worth it. Anyway, shall we begin, Jack? Yes. Go <laughs> ahead, Fredo. Press the play button. <laughs> and hello, one viewer. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> so. <laughs> Three, two, one, play. <laughs> and we play. Paramount logo. <laughs> we never sepia tone. I never I wish. Par I, I was gonna say I wish Paramount made more quality films like this instead of fucking shitty Transformer sequels. Uh, Michael Bay, it's the trouble now. It's all commercial. It's whoever brings the money in. Yeah. Well, they should be allowed to make what they want, as well as obviously bring the money in. That's important, but you know, it shouldn't be the most important thing. So, God, follow music. I think the soundtrack is is fantastic across the three films. Like it's it's one of the best movie scores in history. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's kind of tragic in some ways, the music. It kind of reflects the... Like, it's quite ominous. Yeah. It almost kind of... It almost kind of uh, preludes uh, the, the main character's downfall, really. It's almost a piece written for him, essentially. Because yeah. Tragic character. Yeah. It's made my fortune. I really like this opening shot. It's a great opening. It's a great opening to the film. The lighting is fantastic. Yeah. It's interesting that this guy um, basically tells the godfather of his story. Like, um... Like basically, he, he goes to him for a favor. He wants justice for his daughter being, uh, like, beaten up. Yeah. And this is uh, almost the inciting incident that kind of actually sets up the whole trilogy, really, because had it not been for this guy coming to him, you know, it may, it may, have, not have, it may have affected Michael's actions differently. But it's interesting how these films really display kind of the, the extent of the mafia and how extreme <laughs> people go, the lengths people go to, to keep essentially family, in inverted commas, running, you know, and business running. It, they, they feel like they own the world and they have to keep order and peace. Now, they don't see themselves as criminals. They almost see themselves as peacekeepers. I mean, and that's kind of the mindset that I see, that I think Michael and his father live in. Although, Michael, to more of an extent, really. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and actually, I mean, yeah. Coppola's direction is is also very good. I mean, the way these shots are lit and constructed, just beautiful. 
Yeah, and I love the way this the, the the way the film begins. It starts off on his face, and then it slowly draws back, and and now you see the silhouette of Marlon Brando, like uh, Vito. Yeah. Went the very day. Yeah. To be honest, Marlon Brando is remembered for many things, but whenever somebody mentions his name, I immediately think, "Oh, The Godfather," because literally, it you know that is that is him. You know, he he defined. I think he got, didn't he get an Oscar for this role? Yeah, it, it, second Oscar. I mean, the amount of times that other films in recent years have actually parodied The Godfather. Actually, surprisingly, in animated films, they had in Zootopia, they had that whole scene, which was basically the Godfather, um, which was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And the the guy, the, the the little um rat or mole, sounded like Marlon Brando, but in a squeaky voice. And then actually, in in the film Shark Tale, they parodied the whole mafia thing, where they had Don Lino, <laughs> Robert De Niro, but yeah, that was more like the Godfather too. But they also parodied. Parodied, uh, um, they, they also parodied um, the Godfather and the Simpsons when Marge beats up the mugger. That's a recreation of the scene where Sonny beats up um, Carlo when he's abusing Connie, like his sister. I mean, I like this scene, like where he's talking to uh, the guy, like Martin Brando is, you know, Don Vito Corleone. He's basically saying, like, um, you know. You know, you've never like been friends with me. You've never like invited me over to your house for a coffee or anything. Like, you don't even, you know, call me Godfather. Like, he feels like this guy is disrespecting him. Like, he doesn't even know him, and he's coming here to ask him a favor. And yeah, like, yeah. that's the interesting I mean, thing that they feel like is that respect has to be earned. It's almost like you know, a favor for a favor. You know, he's got to do something for him in order for them to do something for him. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And the interesting with the cat as well, like, I think, I wonder whether, whether they were inspired by James Bond, who was Blofeld. <laughs> I actually, actually watching, like, I, I've read a lot of behind the scenes things and seen a lot of interviews and documentaries and, Making the film, apparently Marlon Brando just uh, it wasn't part of the script. He just saw a cat on the set. There was a someone had a cat um near the set on the Paramount uh, lot, and uh, he just uh, used it for the scene. I mean, what's interesting about um the Godfather is apparently um Sergio Leone was originally offered to direct this film, which is uh. Which is interesting because he directed the Clint Eastwood movies, but he would go on to direct another gangster film years later called uh, Once Upon a Time in America, which is kind yeah. of similar to The Godfather. Like, mm. I mean, this is interesting because we initially, when you see this, you think, "Oh, this guy's a he's he's a, he's a crook, he's a criminal, he's a he's a dodgy fella." But then, in a few minutes, when we cut to his daughter's wedding, you go, oh, okay, he's a family man. You know, so that, there's there's many dimensions to his character. And I think Coppola's got a good attention to detail with the characters. I mean, and also there's a lot of characters in this film <laughs> and across the trilogy. So I think he uh, he did a good job, really, with setting up the, the family, essentially, the Corleone. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Vito's not the one who... Uh, who actually sends the family down the spiral? That's um, his son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, uh, I mean, talking about this film, like, like watching behind the scenes documentaries, like I'm um, on the Blu-ray. Like uh, Francis Ford Coppola said, he had hell making this movie. Like when he was making it, he was always worried that he was going to get fired because he did a lot of things the studio um, didn't want him to do, like the. Uh, Cast Al Pacino um, in the role as Michael, and the studio didn't want Al Pacino because he was kind of unknown then. They wanted Robert Redford or like somebody else. Um, but, like um, he was always worried he was going to get fired, and they didn't want Marlon Brando originally either because his acting career sort of uh, went downhill before this film. Um, yeah. So I mean, he he basically had you know he basically had you know 
he was always worried he was going to get fired and all that. But you know, he, the, the end product managed to pay off, and obviously Paramount, you know, were a lot more uh, helpful on the sequel. Uh, yeah. Well, they needn't have worried given the way the film turned out. Yeah. He also goes to show that sometimes, you know, the studios aren't always right. You know, they can interfere and they can have their say, but ultimately you hire these creatives to, to give you what you want and they should be allowed to have some freedom in what they do. Um, and sometimes the studio get in the way of things too much and it, and it damages the project. The detriment is a, a very bad state, but luckily that didn't happen with these films. Even the third one, I would say. But, I mean, obviously, you know, that's another story for another day. But, yeah. Uh, I, I love these scenes, though, with the party. Like, that's the thing about The Godfather. It's more than just a gangster film. It's basically about family. It's a family drama, you know, with the, the mafia as a sort of backdrop. Um, which, is, you know, I think makes the film even better is the fact that it, it focuses in on family and the drama. Because it was just a gang film, people shooting each other and characters you didn't care about, then it would be pointless. But yeah, it's, um, it's meaningless. It's, it wouldn't be compelling. But you're right. It actually adds a lot more of an emotional gravity to the film. Well, films. Sorry. I should say. Yeah, I mean, um, what was it? Uh, I mean, I think the characters here are all good, like Sonny and Clemenza and all that. Like, I think. Francis Ford Coppola develops the characters very well over the three hours. And, you know, I mean, and he was very faithful to the original book. Like, he got Mario Puzo, the writer of the book, to help him write the screenplay. And he calls it Mario Puzo's The Godfather. And, um, and you can definitely see the, uh, you know, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola's Italian. You definitely see the um, family uh, stuff that he put in here. He tried to make it about family. And, um, yeah. <laughs> right, this is only sort of the only light relief of the film. After this, it all goes very dark, <laughs> very down, downhill. Yeah, I mean, there are there are funny moments in The Godfather. I mean, it's not completely devoid of humor, but it is more of a a sort of tragic epic. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I watched The Godfather, um, I found it a bit slow, but the more I've watched it, the more quicker it's gone by. Like I remember the, the beginning scene where he's talking to um, uh, the, the guy in the office. I, I, when I first watched it, it felt a lot longer, but probably because I'm used to used to the pace of older movies, it's, it goes by a lot faster. And um, I mean, that's the thing I like about films from the 70s. And, you know, they don't they don't feel like they need to have action all the time or really quick editing or quick cuts or whatever like no yeah. it's all kind of, you know really fast paced action you can't really have a big budget movie without loads of cgi or big action scenes like superhero films and that stuff yeah cool but uh, <laughs> well he's a he's a bit of a hothead i think Mm. Yeah, I love the attention to detail as well, like the suits and the cars and all that, and like they really, you know, paid attention to the detail, like recreating the nineteen forties. Yeah, it's also interesting that he's doing like a business on his daughter's wedding day. Well, you know, he has to manage the family business as well as his own family like you know there's the family which is the mafia and then there's family which is his own but <laughs> yeah I mean uh, Marlon Brando actually um, when he was like when Francis Ford Coppola first went over to his house to talk to him about the role like Marlon Brando put some cotton buds in his cheek and slicked back his hair and started doing the voice and all that. And uh, um, so, I mean, yeah, really interesting, but yeah.
I have to say, it looks great in Blu-ray as well. Like the picture definition is very sharp. Sharp. Mm. And I, I like this this film's uh, visual style with the, the sepia tone, and it it kind of it actually kind of gives it that more Italian feel. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but it just it makes it feel more like it just it just makes it more worldly world of of Italy and you know and, and, and of, of the Godfather like it as of you know whoever was the DOP right instinct to do it looks authentic yeah oh shit no yeah uh, how many minutes no. are you um uh 13 13 well 13 13 minutes, 59, uh, well, I'm on 14 minutes now. Sorry, that's my button on the remote. I skipped ahead to the next scene. So I'll, I'll get... Yeah, I'm in... I'm, I'm 14, uh, 29. Do you want me to pause it or? Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm on the part where we see uh, Michael. No, it's it's interesting. Like with Michael in this film, like he's uh, um, he's basically a war veteran. Like he's fought in World War Two, and um, and like uh, you know, he's basically in love with Kay. Um. Like I like this like little speech or whatever he says, um, you know, like oh yeah, yeah, it's it's my family, Kay. It isn't me. I'm not like that. But of course he is like that. You know, later on when he has to take over the mantle of the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, or he feels he has to. <laughs> yeah. Are you in the bit with uh, the guy talking to the Godfather? Yes. Look at Brazzi. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's quite funny, like, uh, like behind the scenes, uh, this scene where he's talking to Marlon Brando, like, uh, like when they were doing, the, 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 cause the guy kept messing it up and he kept doing all these takes to make Mar Marlon Brando laugh. Like, he wrote in his, he put something on his tongue that said, fuck you, when he stuck his tongue out, like, when he was talking to Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. No, but I mean, I love all the family scenes here, like the the party and all that. Like you know, you know, I mean, and it's you know, it's nice because it's a wedding, but obviously, <laughs> the marriage doesn't really plan, plan out in the way that we we'd like to think it would. You know? Yeah, I mean, um. I mean, it's nice that they take their time and, like, they show you the family and they show you what's going on, the wedding and all that. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know it, it's all really, like, it's it's really well done and it makes you, I, I think it, I think all the scenes with the family, like, make you uh, connect more with... Like, yeah, you're absolutely right because later on, you know, you need to spend that amount of time with them because for the events of later on to have the impact that they do, you need to know these characters inside out before beforehand. Well, not necessarily inside out. You need to have an instinct for these characters before they need to have been set up. So when so when you know things take a turn for the worst, you go, oh right. And I think it's a it's a great way of enticing the audience. It is a bit slower paced, but if you're somebody who cares about characters and cares about films, then that's gonna that's gonna work fine. I mean, it's, it's gone by pretty quickly for me. We're only like 16 minutes in. It's gone by pretty quickly, I think. Um, um, and you've got the old man uh, singing as well. <laughs> I mean, this, this must have been actually quite a complicated scene to direct. With all of these people. <laughs> yeah, I think the old man was saying in the Vaj or something like that in Italian. 
as a joke. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else in the wedding, they just take the piss. <laughs> you know, enjoy this life while it lasts, because it isn't going to last long. <laughs> mm. I think the film is really well cast as well. Like all, all the actors do a great job. Um, like Marlon Brando, James Caan, Robert Duvall, Al Pacino, all that. She's she's the one girl. Um, how many brothers does she have? Three. Three. There's Michael, Sonny, and Fredo, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And the guy she marries is Carlos, right? Carlo. Carlo, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. He's a bit of a dick. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy, Johnny Fon, is actually based off Frank Sinatra. Because Frank Sinatra had uh, friends in the mafia. <laughs> No, but uh, Tommy Shire, he played on his uh, sister. Who's the bridesmaid? <laughs> Sorry, who's the bride, not the bridesmaid? <laughs> hmm. And actually, from a cultural perspective, it's just great to see this stuff because. You know, these are pretty Italians, right? So, I mean, Italians celebrate everything much bigger and exaggerated. Like, we we do a lot of celebrations for weddings, obviously. You know, everybody does. But with them, it's a proper festival. It's a sing and a dance and, you know, getting drunk. But with us, it's just, you know, we, we have a good time. You know, we have a ceremony and we say our vows and, and that. And I'm sure they do that as well. But I think I just, I just picture them going full out bringing the whole family in, like 300 people hated, or just completely living it up. <laughs> we, I think, I think scale, I would imagine the Italians do much bigger when it's much more expensive. <laughs> well, but then again, it depends on the circumstance as well. Yeah. I like this scene with uh, uh, Michael, like Al Pacino, where he's saying like a uh, he was. Be he's basically saying in this scene that Johnny was in a shitty contract and uh, he was trying to get out of it, but they wouldn't let him. And then Martin Brando, the Godfather, came and said, you know, to the guy who owned the contract, you know, it'll either be your signature or your brains in the contract, um, which is, you know, qu you know, it's quite interesting. He's basically telling Kay that the mafia threatened to kill the guy unless they let Johnny from his contract like let him go hmm. yeah <laughs> I like to look on Kate's face as well like she's kind of a bit shocked like, about the story <laughs> yeah he's you know this is interesting because you know he's actually kind of, he's the odd one out in his family he doesn't really want anything to do with it right at first. And then when something happens later on, it kind of, his whole world changes. He then becomes so involuntarily escaped the mantle of becoming the Godfather, even though there are times later on in the series when he, when he could step down, but he doesn't. And he, he kind of gets more of it all. Which is and, and he well descends really. He falls into disarray by achieving the status of the Godfather, which which is interesting. Um, it's about Michael really, his journey through the through the trilogy, um, even in the third one. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, it's yeah, it's interesting because he kind of succumbs to the power. Like at first, he wants nothing to do with the family business. He doesn't want to do with the mafia and then things sort of fuck up like you know and and then he has to take the responsibility on his shoulders because Sonny gets killed <laughs> spoilers <laughs> oh well, well a lot of people have seen this you, you gotta have seen the film 
I mean, if you're listening to us, our audio commentary, you've probably seen the film before anyway. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, Al Pacino, like, I think because of this trilogy, like, like he he is my favorite actor just because he's great. He's great in all three movies, especially the second one, and and um and he's just he's just so, so many great uh, films over the years. And uh, I mean, I think he's it's perfect right. as my <laughs> <laughs> banging this girl. <laughs> It's just uh, finishing up. <laughs> oh, <that's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Did you imagine dead like she's just coming? <laughs> like Bond. <laughs> she's just <coming>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just coming, sir. <laughs> Good night, sir. <laughs> Roger Moore. <laughs> you can act like a man, but you know, it's how you take out the husband from up here and play it like a woman. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? <laughs> you can act like a man. <laughs> I mean, no, if this film, like, if this film was set nowadays, if he told, if he told him to man up, that people would say, "Oh, that's how I did it. That's a, uh, that's wrong or whatever." It's like you know, <laughs> it's nothing wrong with telling someone to man up. You know, <laughs> they're crying like yeah. a baby. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> and he was as part of his job to you know keep people in line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is when men were allowed to be men. You <laughs> know, they weren't told uh, being a uh, like about toxic masculinity or whatever, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> I think the word you're looking for is dominant. When, uh, when men were dominant over, well, everything. Um, and I mean, that was just the world that, that, that we lived in at the time. Nowadays, it's all very PC and very, you know, equal. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind that society being equal. I just... I, I don't agree with like uh, people being told of being like like feminists go on about toxic masculinity. It's like there's nothing toxic about being male yeah. <laughs> or having male traits. <laughs> that fucking wedding cake, Jesus, that is huge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, they put on a show. <laughs> Why you dream I done so disrespectfully? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is the stuff with Waltz where he uh, talks to the guy who runs <laughs> movie contract. <laughs> Not Christoph Waltz. <laughs> <Lol. laughs> Cuckoo. Yeah. Uh, and they all. They all get in the photo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this scene as well where he's dancing with his daughter. Like, oh. I mean, that, that's the thing as well. Like, Francis Ford Coppola, like, instead of just showing you these guys as scumbags, like two dimensional, like, uh, scumbags, he shows you that. They can be. They do care about their family. I mean, yes, they may be actors and all that, but they still, they still have some kind of emotion. They still have some kind of heart. Yeah. You know, even, even if they are, you know, bad guys. <laughs> there is a, a method to what they do, and you know, it, it's always most of the time based on emotions for loved ones. You know. They're always trying to keep loved ones, you know, safe, and they do the wrong things for the right reasons. But now we've now we've cut away from the wedding. We're on to <laughs> waltz. Yeah, like they're they're in Hollywood now. Uh, 
Like, yeah, yeah, but this is the whole story. Like Johnny Fontaine wants to get out of his movie contract. I, I love the music here, like the fifties stuff. <laughs> yeah, fifties Hollywood jazz. <laughs> I think you're right about uh, like this kind of the cinematography, the sort of sepia orange, kind of makes it look more Italian. I think. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it just it gives you that that look about it because it looks like you know they're in a warm place, they're all dressed and the way they are, and also their skin color as well. It it just matches for me. I know that sounds weird, but don't you think that this sort of fits? <laughs> Oh dear, Jack's gone. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, the, yeah, this scene's interesting where he's talking to the head of the movie studio. Back? Yeah, sorry, I um, accidentally pressed a red button. <laughs> yeah, they basically won't take any of the mafia shit, but that'll soon change. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Shortly, there's a very iconic scene coming up, isn't there? Yeah. Something to do with a horse, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Just to note, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. Yeah. Disclaimer. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's got a nice house. <laughs> Fucking hell, that is amazing. How they afforded that? <laughs> Incredible. How much was the budget for this film? Oh, millions, obviously, but um, I think they had. I I think they had permission to use this place to film. Because it was probably owned by a millionaire of some sort down in Italy or wherever. They oh should. no, I think this, I I think this 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 part set in LA is in Hollywood. Oh right. Yeah, because this is the head of the, this guy's the head of the studio. Um, Johnny Fontaine wants out of the contract, so uh, the Dawn sends down. Uh, um, he sends down uh, Robert Duvall's character to uh, change his mind. Ah, uh, Tom Hagen, that's it. Yeah. Some some really good shots here, like the shot there of them uh, having their food at the table, like from far back. <laughs> Head of the studio, eh? Well, he's loaded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, huge in the films that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting if if you're the head of a movie studio. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I don't think he's. I don't think they're all quite like that. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there are some obviously that have uh, slipped around. I mean, not just not just the the heads of studio, but just the, you know producers and other people like, and even actors. You know, um, what's his name, Harvey Weinstein, and you know, Kevin Spacey. I know those two are definitely. Um, there were some sexual allegations made against them, uh, which is a just a shame to hear that. Really, but unfortunately, you can't stop people these days. I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's what the whole Me Too campaign was like. I think some of them kind of 
well, we, we know Weinstein abused his power and so did Spacey. Um, um, oh, yeah, and yeah, of course, this scene, this very famous scene here. I like the build up with the music and the shots. Like, mm. the, the Godfather music. <laughs> Ah, the sun, my eyes, my beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. When I first saw this scene, I thought, what the fuck? But, I mean, because an image like this doesn't leave your mind just that easily. <laughs> I didn't notice this. He's got an Oscar on his, uh, beside his bed there. <laughs> I like the sort of music here, the sort of uh, violins or whatever it is. Mm. Like the kind of uh, building it up. And like, you see the blood, he sees the blood in his hand and he's like, what's going on here? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you've been framed. (laughs) Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
Marlon Brando's acting in this film is, is pretty. This performance, I think, really defined him as an actor. I mean, obviously, he's done a lot of things over his career, but The Godfather was certainly one of his greatest achievements. Um, and you know, this film really, you know, he's he's almost he's like the beacon holding, trying to hold his family together. And almost trying to hold the mafia together. He's almost, he's the leader of two different forces, and it's about how he maintains that power until it's taken away from him, and then how it's you know almost in a way how power corrupts. Um, you know, seeing him do all this, you know, to wonder like who he really trusts, <laughs> like or does he does he trust anyone? I mean. That's a thing that's definitely come across in a lot of uh, in a lot of films. Um, you know, no, this is an interesting, interesting moment here. <coughs> and also with the voice, well, it just it makes it makes him sound very creepy and sort of menacing. But you know, he's a, he's a man with heart and soul. You know, you you actually almost. You really do sort of actually, actually sort of care about him as, as the film goes on. You know, he's got three sons and a daughter, you know, he just, you know, he loves his family. He's a family man, but, you know, he's got to do what's right for the greater good. And uh, it may mean doing some bad things, but, <laughs> yeah. The film does take its time. It is a slower film. It's a slow burner. So, people who uh, are, are just sort of casual moviegoers that just kind of want to see something just for entertainment's sake will probably not like these films because they are slower. They're more slowly paced. And they're long as well. They're three hours long. Um, <clears throat> but I, I don't mind because, you know, I look into films in an analytical sort of way, and I think that these films are paced really well for what they are. They are very long, yes. I mean, the, I mean, the second one is, I mean, it's, it's not short. I mean, God no, it's the next one is three hours twenty minutes. But... Mm. Now we're in Christmas. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Very rarely do you see, see Christmas uh, in a sort of film like this, like sort of a gangster mafia sort of film. So in that sense, you can kind of count The Godfather as a Christmas film, but not really. Not predominantly, but yeah. Yeah, there'll be some shooting going on. Nice to see by this point the tension is sort of rising now. We're 40 minutes to the film. And I'm back. Oh, no. And guess what? It's Christmas. <laughs> really? I thought Christmas only yeah. came around once a year. Oh, God. Again. <laughs> no, it's not to know that the tension is now rising. Yeah. Technically, I guess you could say the Godfather is a Christmas movie. Yeah, into that just now while you were away, but I guess I mean there's the, the film doesn't remain in Christmas for I remember, but yeah, because it sort of counts. Yeah. 
Uh, well, Die Hard's definitely a Christmas movie. That's all set at Christmas. <laughs> Put that on your Christmas tree and fucking smoke it. <laughs> it's interesting the scenes where they're talking in Italian. He's, he's luring in uh, the guy who is from the. He's trying to lure in Luca Brazzi. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this film. <laughs> yeah. A lot of very small characters as well. Yeah. Oh! Oh, God, the expression in his eyes. <laughs> That was very well done. <laughs> That's the thing if you're in the mafia, you're not, uh, most of the time, you're not going to go out um, nicely. <laughs> yeah, you have to be ruthless to survive. Because you can never really trust anyone, even if they're fairly close to you. Oh, I missed. I think I missed the scene where the uh, Godfather gets shot with the oranges. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, no, it's coming up, I think. Yeah, this is a scene now, actually, yeah. Oh, they uh, parody. They parodied this scene in Analyze This with Robert De Niro. Like Billy Crystal has a dream that uh, he's the Godfather in this scene, and he gets shot. And uh, Robert De Niro's Fredo. It's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they also parodied this. Like, there's a funny video where Marlon Brando gets shot, and he drops a Jameson bottle, <laughs> and they're like. Fred who's crying over it. <laughs> oh shit. That was intense. Another good shot. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> um is this a good time to say Merry Christmas? <laughs> Worst Christmas ever. <laughs> oh, that was his son, wasn't it? What? Was that his son that was with him? Yeah, Fredo. Oh, Fr Fredo. Fredo, yeah, sorry. I didn't recognise him. <laughs> I've seen this film for quite a few years. <laughs> It's actually weird remembering Michael before he becomes the Godfather. He almost he just seems quite you know young and you know mellow, and that he's actually got some direction in life. But I think after after that incident, you know, <laughs> this is when his world kind of turns upside down. Like the scene where he saves his god, uh, saves his dad, but like in the hospital. That, that's kind of where the beginning of his descent begins. Yeah, he goes really mad. Oh fuck! It burns. Ah. <laughs> Why don't I just die another day, Michael? 
<laughs> 47 minutes. You know, this the pacing was actually very good. It's felt shorter. Hmm. Sunny. It's interesting as well that you see them all like concern, like that everybody's affected by it. Like, is that Sonny's wife, or is it just a girl that he's with? Oh, that's his wife. That's oh. his wife. Is it Jane Khan that plays Sonny? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he looks good. He's also in a uh, Elf. He played uh, Will Ferrell's dad and Elf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's good enough. He, he, he's been in a lot of films, but I guess, like, it's interesting because he's the character like that is so impulsive. He'll just literally like he'll just snap so easily. I guess it's fun to play a character like that who, who's just he just reacts to everything so so much. Yeah. Like he's got a real short fuse. I mean, uh, that's why he becomes a bad... I mean, he becomes a Dawn temporarily. Um, and even Marlon Brando said he was a bad Dawn because he's not very level-headed. He's very quick to react. kind of makes him a bad Dawn. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Does Sonny die? Um, yeah, he does, yeah. In this film or in a later film? Oh, the first one. Oh, right. I thought he did. I just, I forgot. And Tom, and Tom is the, uh, he's a sort of friend of the family, isn't he? Yeah. Didn't they recast him for the second one? No, 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 no. He's uh, Robert Duvall plays him in the second one as well. Oh, right. He wanted to come back. Francis Ford Coppola wanted him back for the third one, but Robert Duvall asked for too much money, so that's why he's not in the third one. Uh, do you think it's weird? Like, for me personally... I kind of feel now that, that you know the Bond movie, License, it kind of has elements of The Godfather, you know, with the whole Sanchez and the Mafia and the drugs thing. You know, to me, that it just it reminds me a little bit of The Godfather, just kind of like a more modernised version of it, and just with James Bond. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, um, I think... Uh, I, I don't know if a mafia movie really works for James Bond, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, License to Kill will, is a is a sort of a slight fail, really. But oh well. That's the thing. That's every... Sorry, you go. No, you, no, you go. I was going to say, that's the thing, you know, it's, just, oh, it's business. Everything the mafia you do is, to them, is, is business, you know. <laughs> that's their way of life. I mean, it's interesting as well, the way it just tells Tom, like, oh, yeah, your boss is dead. Just make a deal with me, you know, try and make a deal, like, because he wants, he wants to sell his drugs, he wants to make money and that's the reason why he uh, tries to kill the Godfather. Because Vito turned down his offer. Yeah. Ah. Very fucking Christmas. There's a lot. Because I shot him in, in the back. Mm 
Yeah. And it wasn't like directly into his spine. It was sort of towards the side, I think, a few times. So he was lucky there. I mean, a lot of people would have died from that, but some people have been known to survive multiple gunshots. Because he's the Godfather. <laughs> he's untouchable. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unfortable. Oh, that's a, that's a film with Sean Connery, The Untouchables. <laughs> <laughs> Try and touch me, Lash. You're dead. <laughs> Get out of here, you Diego bastard. That's from the film. <laughs> oh, this, this is interesting. Michael comes in all sort of emotional and he doesn't, he's kind of beside himself. He doesn't really quite know what to do. And the family have to, you know... Breathe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I was going to say actually, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this, yeah, this seems interesting because Sonny becomes the Godfather since uh, you Who's know the, the Godfather recovering. Yeah, isn't like, isn't there like? Something wrong with Fredo. He's, he's sort of he's quite. He's got some kind of condition, hasn't he? Oh no, he doesn't. He doesn't have a condition. He's just. He's just kind of. He's just stupid. He's not very smart. Very bright. He's not intelligent. Uh, he's actually older than Michael, isn't he? Yeah, Sonny's the oldest. Then Fredo, uh, Fredo, and then uh, Michael. Uh, Mike. Yeah. And the sister is, is the youngest, isn't she? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, the Godfather's probably happy. He mostly has male sons because the mafia is it's quite a, well, Male's it's quite a tough guy sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, you don't really see any females in the mafia. Very, very few. I mean, the sister doesn't really. What's what's her name, by the way? The sister. Connie. Connie, that's it. Connie doesn't really get involved really with the business side of things. I, as far as I'm aware, anyway. And um, not, not until the third one. Uh, uh, he helps out Michael in the third film, but yeah. not in the first two. And then in the second film, she she pleads to him to, you know, help Fredo. <laughs> because oh Fred yeah, Luca Brasi sleeps the fishes. Yeah, I mean it's actually interesting because the mafia do do that kind of thing. Like they'll put put a sheep's head in a box and send it to you, basically saying like you're gonna die, you know, unless you shut your mouth. Like it's a warning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonny's running wild. <laughs> when is he not? <laughs> yeah. He's no ray of sunshine, that's for sure. Yeah. We're walking on sunny. Oh. <laughs> Interesting how sort of the the whole uh, kind of the, the running of the mafia changes since since Vito's shot. How it really just descends. It doesn't. It loses the stability really without him. He he managed to keep it keep the peace quite well. But yeah. Since he since he was shot, that's it. It's all it's all gonna go to shit. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, it's it's interesting, like, um, uh, when this film set, like, from nineteen forty five up to like the early early fifties, like, set over a few years, like, in terms of time. Um, I mean, yeah, this this is. But, but this is a good shot here, the reeds or whatever. Like Going for a piss. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, I think I remember what happened to you. Oh. He's like, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Oh no, I killed that guy. Yeah. Was that guy um, part of uh, the, the crowd that shot Vito? I think so, yeah. I think he had something to do with it. I mean, that's interesting as well is that there's a conflict between the five families of New York, the five mafia families. Hmm. Get down. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, um, you really get like, that, that's a nice thing as well, but this film is it. You get a really nice slice of uh, Italian pizza. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. no, no, you get a, like a really um, good insight into, into um, Italian family life. Like you see them cooking and, you know, <coughs> all that, and they're probably celebrating stuff. Yeah, it's interesting how essentially the, the mafia, the whole idea of it, was originally spawned from Italy. It was, it was kind of, you know, and then in, in a way, it kind of moved to America from Italy. But I think this film pretty much, and well, these three films show the inner workings of the mafia. Um, and how it was essentially how they run, really, and you know, <laughs> business is business, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, well, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, it's interesting that you know, uh, I mean, yeah, Francis Ford Coppola, you know, he definitely like he should, like, that's the thing, like, he knew that if it was just a if it was just a, you know, ga gangsters like just killing each other, be kind of, they, you know, and that they weren't relatable as characters, then it wouldn't work. So he focuses on the family as well, like, and that's the thing. It's, it's it it is a gangster film, but it's but it is a it is a family drama. It's it's really about the characters and you know, and and you know what's going on with them, like what they're thinking and all that, and and specifically Michael, you know. I think what we're seeing here is him. He's just, I think he's very conflicted about what's going on. I think he's just, he's very emotional. And I think that's, ultimately, that becomes his enemy. You know, he's, he becomes his own enemy, really, because his emotions just go out of control. And he's, you know, I mean, he obviously respects his dad quite a lot um, to, to take on the mantle. But I think by this point, because he's quite young and he's quite naive, he doesn't really know the real world and becoming the godfather kind of gives him an insight into that and showing sort of essentially that the world is a dark place you know you know people get hurt even family and it's you know i think he's it's something he struggles to deal with at first and i i think his character arc across the three films really works even the third one yes haters gotta hate but i don't <laughs> yeah i mean i love the whole like I said before, I love the whole trilogy. It's my favorite trilogy. I mean, um, and yeah, I mean, as for like, uh, yeah, Michael, I mean, I think the problem is he becomes, like you're saying, he lets his emotions kind of get control of him, which he kind of does, but like, because he, you know, he becomes involved with the mafia, but in the second one, he just becomes emotionless. You know, he just, he kills everybody, you know, he get he gets everybody killed and he becomes a really emotionally shut off and yeah. psychopathic and yeah. um like, you know, I mean considering how how things were before it may even better just to have Sonny. I mean that's the lesser of two evils. <laughs> but but then there yeah. was the story. <laughs> I, I really like this scene as well, like where he um defends his father in the hospital. Like he uh, looks after his his, his dad because he knows like like the underworld knows that he's still alive, and you know, Salotso would, you know, Salotso would definitely want another go at uh, yeah. killing the Godfather. 
Or just wanted to bring him his Christmas ham. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting how the hospital was designed, because you know what this film's what's set in the forties, fifties, is it? Forties, yeah. Yeah, how the wards and everything all look different. It almost looks like a kind of a hotel room, you know, really like the way it was laid out. Obviously, you know, and also it's in a different country as well. So back then, I suppose there was even more limitations with wards and everything. So I mean, people people were giving the NHS a lot of slack now, but I mean, think of it. Back in these days, I think it was you know we were more restricted. Well, I mean, the NHS um, was created after the Second World War, and uh, thank God for the for the NHS because I think it's a, you know, it would because in America, you know, uh, until it's recently, the cost. let's let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, it would be terrible, like, if we were in a situation in America, like, where you couldn't afford the money um, uh, for the hospital, so you could just die. But here, you know, it's free. You know, everybody has the right to free uh, health care, which, you know, thank God for the Labour Party. Thank God for Clement Otley for giving us the NHS. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, you know, we deserve at least that, you know, at least free health care, you know. I mean, well, I think we would be screwed without them, to be honest. I mean, you know, people people complain, so oh, there's not enough beds, there's not enough this and not that, but where would we be without them? You know, I'd... Would you rather have no NHS or have an NHS that what we have now? Where yes, there are limitations. There, you know, hospitals are struggling to, to fit everybody in and to see everyone. But you have to really assess. You know, assess yourself as well. How serious is your condition, and is it worth going to the hospital? If it is, fair enough. Go and go go and see. Um, but you know, it, if it turns out you have to wait a while, or if, if there are no beds, then then, you know, okay, that's it's the way it is. You'll have to find somewhere else to go. Um, obviously, it depends on the situation, but I, I have a lot of respect for the NHS for what they do. I mean, and a happy 70th birthday as well, just to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, back to the Godfather. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this scene is, is really well done, like where he gets the nurse to move the bed because he, he knows that, the mafia will, have, will try again to kill his, you know, his father. Yeah, they'll try and smother him. <laughs> yeah. Where's Mark Pillow when you need him? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I could sit through that shit again. No, one of the worst actors ever in one of the worst <laughs> movies ever made. <laughs> It was his only acting role in a film ever after that. I think it was his first film and it was his last film. I'm <laughs> yeah, surprised. I'm going to scratch your fingernails somewhere else. <laughs> I'd much rather watch this film than Superman 4 again. At least it's, it's three hours of fantastic filmmaking, whereas Superman 4 is 90 minutes of absolute fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's I mean, this no comparison. Th this is flying by compared to Superman Four. <laughs> yeah, low well, the amount of times he flies in the same fucking shop. <laughs> that's, that's another commentary that we've already done. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to watch that, it's 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 up on my channel. <laughs> God. Yeah, it's listed as audio rant commentary. This is definitely audio fan commentary. <laughs> yeah. This is a lovely scene. He's I love his smile. It's the first time we see him smile as he sees his son. You know. Well, no, he's he's. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's nice as well that you know he's grateful that his son's looking after him, and you can tell Michael is generally a, a caring person. He is a he is a good guy, but the thing is, he becomes the bad guy, and he doesn't realize it because he has to become the Godfather and. You know, yeah, he doesn't see himself as a villain. He doesn't see himself as what he does is 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 wrong. You know, he just sees what he sees, and he sees okay. How can we resolve this? 
if it means doing the extreme, then okay, he'll do it. You know, he has to. If, if it feels like he's called upon to do it, but he doesn't. He never stops and he never assesses what he's doing, and he doesn't. And he doesn't bring his emotions to contemplate what he's doing. But I mean, this is only the start of how. I mean, in the Godfather Two, I think that's when we really see him go go further. You know. Yeah. And then it's interesting how the third movie is about him repenting about what he's done. Yeah, I mean, to me, the trilogy is kind of like the first one, he dis- he's descending into hell. But the second one, he is in hell. And the third one, he's trying to come out of hell. Yeah. I mean, there is that scene in the third one where he's go- he goes to the church to confess his sins. Well, it, kind of. And, you know, he's, he's asking for forgiveness. Yeah, the priest, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a really good acting scene. Powerful scene in the third one where he, like, he confesses his sins. Why do people who hate the film just forget about that? Like, why? Like, they, they just don't seem to... You know, people say, oh, The Godfather 3 was shit. Oh, you know. <laughs> not seeing it, really. Yeah, I mean, this uh, captain, this police captain here, is, is a shit. Right. Yeah, the, the police captain, um, uh, he's basically corrupt. Like, Oh, dickhead. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, he's basically a corrupt cop that's working for Salotto. Um, yeah. so he's taking the, the dirty money in. It's always about money. <laughs> Well, I mean, back then, uh, that's what the mafia did. They like paid policemen to look the other way, like bribed them with money so they'd shut up. Uh, I mean, as far as we know, Vito is still alive. Yeah. I, f- I forgot to mention the scene where um, he gets the baker to act like he's a bodyguard. It's quite good. Like, you see him shaking afterwards when Michael tries to light him his cigarette. Like, he's he's shaking from fear. Yes. Yeah, that was very good. A lot of the... Uh... The storytelling is all in the performances as well with the actors. There's a lot, a lot of them, a lot of emotions. They're very tricky scenes they have to do. Um, and also, the characters are very distinctive. Which, which is great. I mean, Sonny, you know, <laughs> he's, he's unstoppable as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, and you, you see, like, Michael, you know, he's basically, his jaw's broken, like. <laughs> Beep, bobbity, boop. <laughs> No more meetings, no more discussions, no more Salazzo tricks. They give him one message I want Salazzo. Calm. Calm. No. This is not personal. It's not my father. He was a shooter of your father's business. It's not personal, Sonny. But this is what happens, all right? And listen, do me a favor, Tom. No more advice on how to tax me. Just help me. Right? The, yeah, this is interesting. He just he doesn't care. Like Sonny will just, you know, like you know, you, you shoot his father, he's gonna strike back. But you know, Tom's trying to tell him to, you know, 
put it behind him. Well, to be honest, with Sonny, it's also like, well, if you're going to steal his teddy bear, he'll strike back at me. <laughs> He's that unhinged. You know, he, he'll stop for nothing to, you know, be in control. <laughs> Yeah. The irony is that, in a way, you would think that Sonny would be the one that would really descend, but and he probably would had he been allowed to stay in his position. But um, no, Michael ends up being ten times worse, really. Yeah, but, but yeah, but it, it's interesting that you know Sonny is you know, uh, you know he'll just you know, like you said, he'll just you know. He's so hot-headed; he'll react to anything. Like, and, and that's that's kind of his weakness as a dawn is that he's too thin-skinned. Like, you know, yeah. he tries to play the bad boy, the tough guy. You know, the guy that will, you know, fuck you up, <laughs> so to speak. But you know, he just, he needs to take a chill pill. And. This is weird. Like the first time we see Michael in the chair, and he actually he comes up with the ideas and he 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 brings it all together. No, no, no. This this is interesting as well because he's um, he, you know, he's saying like, uh, oh, I'll I'll kill those two guys. I'll kill a police officer in Salotto if you give me a gun. Like we really see like um. You know the the beginning of him becoming the Godfather here. Like he's, you know, you know. I mean, he doesn't care by this point. Like you know, he doesn't care about being involved in the family business anymore. You know, like you know. Well, like they said, it's it's now personal because they shot his dad. So. <laughs> yeah. And they all just kind of laugh at him because he's a college boy. Yeah. yeah. What is like? How old is he in this film? What, like twenty one or something. There's a lot of references to the Godfather in uh, the Sopranos. There's actually a stripper joint called the Bada Bing, which I think is a reference to that line in in this scene. <laughs> Bada bing. Yeah, strictly business. You, you say that now, but yeah. Oh, that's interesting how they use the tape. I get, does that so that tape doesn't pick up any fingerprints? I would imagine. Yeah. It's interesting as well because he knows about guns. He's uh, been in the army, but he's never killed anyone up close. Right? But he, he's he's like a firearms expert, really. Just for, just just from his experience in the army. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing when Michael gets hold of a gun, he sort of develops a taste for it, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. There's, uh, yeah, they're talking about mafia wars, yeah. wars between the families. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> it's interesting that they're eating like a Chinese here instead of like um, Italian food. Run off the spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> instead of uh, n- noodles, it's instead of spaghetti, it's noodles this time. <laughs> <laughs> Are they are they planning to basically kill Salazzo? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's, well, it makes sense this post. <laughs> I mean he's caused the shit. <laughs> if it weren't for him, the family would have remained pretty pretty much as they were. But again, there would be no story. <laughs> yeah. There's there's, re- there's loads of really good shots in this film, and uh, I think the cinematography is great. <laughs> ring, ring. Yeah, yeah, Sonny's like, you know, like, I think Tom is kind of, you know, kind of short-tempered when it comes to Sonny because, you know, Don Vito's a lot more cool-headed. Sonny's just, you know, kind of like, yeah, fuck him, like. <laughs> yeah, he'll punch, he'll, he'll punch, you know, any guy with a gun, you know, he, he, you know, anything he sees, he could just, he, he could use them as a punch bag. Anybody notice, Joe? It kind of reminds me of Donald Trump in the way he's, he's so... Uh, hot headed. <laughs> well, Donald, Donald Trump's very hot headed. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of things wrong with that man. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he's the president. <laughs> well, I'm just glad I'm not an American. No offense, Alan. Yeah. I'm gonna blast you. <laughs> it's interesting, like they show flashbacks of uh, the dawn and second film and uh, and Clemenza, like young Clemenza. Mm. Yes. Like that's his that's the Godfather sort of uh his front for the mafia is uh Janko olive oil. <laughs> well yeah, that's they're sending him away, aren't they? We're just getting rid of him. <laughs> Well, no, like, well, if he if he kills the police officers, he has to flee. So that's when he goes to Sicily um, for like a couple of years or whatever, or like a year, like to to, to get away from the heat and until the heat dies down, then he can come back mm. for his own protection, really, more than anything else. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a good scene. The restaurant. I mean, yeah, you you can tell he he got beat up pretty badly. Oh, I mean, uh, Salotto, I mean, he's very, he's very good at, uh, you know, trying to talk to people, but in reality, he's, he's, a, he's a scumbag. Sorry about the other night, Mike. Sorry about the other night, Mike. Frisky, so turn around. I got a frisky, so turn around. Oh, frisky. <laughs> we're, actually, we're nearly halfway through this film. Oh, 
right. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad Francis Ford Coppola did get to direct this film because I couldn't see anyone else directing it. And I think it's because of this film well, and the whole trilogy that it's probably why he's my, my favourite director. Or... Yeah, he's, he's an absolutely fantastic director. At some point, I'll definitely watch more of his work. Yeah, I def- I'd recommend uh, Apocalypse Now. That, that's very good. Uh... With, um, yeah, raves about that film. I don't, yeah, I think there was a lot of inspiration. Uh, Matt Reeves was inspired by that for War for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, Harrison Ford is actually in Apocalypse Now for like a few Yeah, I like the piano, like the the soundtrack, like the the like the music here is very sinister. Like it works for the scene, like the build up. Hey, would you like a pasta and a meatball? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought somebody was knocking at my door. No problem. problem. <laughs> did, uh, did they turn up to the door in hats and suits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> oh, work. Were they? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, I, I just locked my bedroom door. Well, I thought somebody was knocking on my bedroom door. I like the way Al Pacino act looking at him so intensely. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell he's, he really he really hates him. Despises him. <laughs> yeah. I guess Solotso is kind of anticipating that something's going to happen. I mean, you know, he's you know, he's only shot his dad, so you would you would assume that he would retaliate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is probably the standout scene for Al Pacino in the movie. Like, in the first, like, the, yeah, in the first one, like the bit, the bit um, after this where he gets the gun and like the look on his face, like his eyes keep darting around. Like you can tell he's really hesitating. You know, uh, he's really contemplating whether they kill this guy or not. Like later when he gets the gun from the toilet. Yeah. No more attempts on my father's life. Hmm. Yeah. It's a bit late for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, first him, clean. I first him, he's clean. He yeah, he's not an idiot. Yeah, but luckily, Michael thought cuddle. Michael's smarter. <laughs> Take 
Oh, ghost of luck. <laughs> oh. That was getting Mon- <laughs> Mantra was just a water pistol. Like, we <laughs> took out. That would be funny. He's gonna do it. He's gonna kill him. Whoa, don't kill me. <laughs> kill him. Do it. Do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. Fuck him hard. No. <laughs> yeah. I think Al Pacino was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Oh, yeah, because he's he sort of not really the main character. Who's this one, isn't he? Well, I'd say he is kind of the main character, but more than Brando's the godfather. Yeah, but... yes, yeah. So according to the Academy, they yeah. thought that he wasn't the main character. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think Al Pacino's acting is really good, and like the sound of the train. <laughs> Oh, wow. That was really good. I agree. That, that sounds of the train getting louder and louder, and then the back, you know, the, the shots. Yeah, and you, and you could tell Michael is like, um, he's, he's uh, kind of, he's conflicted. Like, like the look in his face when it zooms in, and you've got the screech of the train. Like, I love how the tension builds in that scene. Oh yeah, this scene, these scenes with the uh, newspapers. Um, uh, George Lucas said he actually edited that scene because uh, uh, he worked with Francis Ford Coppola um, uh, during this movie. Yeah, they were they were quite good friends. <coughs> yeah, yeah, he edited this scene with the newspapers here, like. Um, no, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think they they had their own um, independent film studio, uh, f- film uh, studio called um, Zoetrope Productions, I think. Mm. American Zoetrope. Uh, yeah. Oh, Zoetrope. Yes. Yeah, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Francis Ford Coppola and him set that up. Ooh. This is quite a good montage here, like where you got all the photos and the uh, like all the photos of the gang line shootings and stuff. We are officially halfway through this film. Yeah, would have been a meat on him, been pretty, pretty quick so far. Hmm. Vito returns home, yay. I mean, Superman 4 is about 90 minutes, which is half the length of this film, but it feels much longer than this film does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You thought you could get rid of me that easily, you fuckers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love the cars as well, like the 50s cars. Like, they're really cool. Yeah, nowadays, obviously, cars are much more sort of efficient. But still, that, that old design, it's, it's quite cool. It's like a nice retro design. <clears throat> oh, this is a scene where the uh, Godfather comes home, I think. Vito Corleone. Oh. It's actually interesting in the second film, we find out why his name is Vito Corleone. Like, um,. He, he's actually Vito Andolini, that's his real name, but when he came over here, like, the guy who was checking his passport uh, mistook it, like, Vito Corleone, like, Vito from Corleone, so he's like, oh, Vito Corleone, like, so I got the name. <laughs> I'm happy to see him. Yeah, yeah, but this is a nice scene, like, you know, he's, he's back, and 
You know, he's got his little family surrounding him and stuff, and his friends. <coughs> it's sunny. You the little kids, the babies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sonny's a, a cheat. You know, he cheats on his wife, but I still think he, like, cares for his family and stuff. Like, He's just a bit of a player, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. He's a ladies' man. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Carlo gets married to uh, Tony at the start of the film, and then, yeah, and Carlo's like a real bastard to Tony. Like you know, when he beats her up, and, and he's like, "Oh yeah, shut up!" and sets the table. Like you know. Happy wife, happy life. Get well soon. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of sad what happened to John Cazale, the uh, actor played Fredo. I think he died quite young. Died a few years later of lung cancer, I think. Oh, was he a smoker? Yeah. He was actually, um, he was actually, I think the time he died, he was in a relationship with Meryl Streep. Oh. It's a shame. He was in a film with Robert De Niro and Meryl Streep, The Deer Hunter. Like, I've that film. I've never seen it. It's, it's the last film he did before he uh, he died. Speaking of which, have you seen have you seen Mamma Mia yet? The second one. Uh, not yet. I'm gonna see it next week, unfortunately. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I saw Ant Man on the Wasp instead on Friday. My friend wanted to go see that, so I went and saw that. Oh, what did you think? Yeah, it was good. I bought the first one of Blu-ray, so I'm going to review the first one, and then I'll review Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, nice. I mean, had you actually seen the first one before you saw the second one? Uh, no, but I understood it anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> calm. And we remain calm. <laughs> This, this, there is just no reasoning with this guy. Sonny is just a... He's just so cocky. Yeah. He basically pissed off Tom and Tom. Like, Tom's kind of fed up by him. Like, Yeah, because he just doesn't listen, does he? Yeah, yeah, Car Carlo is, um, yeah, he's an asshole. Like, you know, when they're talking, like, Connie's talking, he's like, yeah, shut up. Like, like you know, tells her to shut up. Like, you know, you can tell he only married. I think the only reason Carlo married Connie was so, um, the money. He could, yeah, and so he could uh, be part of the family because he wants to be part of the mafia. Like, he wants to be part of the uh, family business. So that's kind of the, the reason why he married her. I think then, then doesn't he? He dies, doesn't he? Because they, they find out about him abusing her, and I think they they try and kill him. Don't they? Yeah, actually, this uh, scene here, um, uh, like that crossfade there, like, was really good. I mean, I actually, um, I went to Sicily last year. My mum uh, managed to save up for it, and. Uh, we were actually gonna go to the town of Corleone. Um, we actually we didn't go to Corleone, but we did um, go to like um, Syracuse and all these places like Sicily. Like we 
we started off in the south and went all the way up to the north of Sicily. We were there for a month, but I mean, the heat was crazy. It was like 45 degrees, but it's a really beautiful country. Like, I mean, yeah, uh, like, I mean, funnily enough, in Sicily, they're kind of cracking down on the mafia. Like, they're uh, getting rid of the mafia over there, but um, it's, it's where it all started. The mafia started in Sicily, but I mean, I think where this is set, it's like northern Sicily or something. Mm. So, have we jumped a couple of years now, or, or is this still the present day? Oh, this is, um, it's the, uh, no, no, it's set, um, that Michael's just gone to Sicily. Oh, so he's, he's not been there very long. Stunning location. I don't know where Jack's gone, but uh, listen to all the action. <laughs> some beautiful shots here, some uh, just excellent photography. As I'm walking. here, I, I just muted myself for a second. I'm still here. Yeah. It's nice that films like this, we get to kind of have a lot of breathing time. We get to kind of just stop and admire, you know, we get to admire the location, you know, we look at where they are. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, I kind of miss, like, filmmaking from the 70s and 60s because they don't They don't need, they don't, they don't feel the need to have action all the time or have really fast, quick editing. Like, you know, I mean, every film now, like, when it comes to action, it's all really fast-paced, all really cut very quickly. Um, and, it, you know, it doesn't really need that, you know. Like, you know, you can have a film that doesn't need to, you know, uh, the, you know, have an action scene all the time, like, or, yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't always get action films nowadays, but yeah, you know, we don't get a lot of attention to detail like this. That's what we used to. I mean, there are certain things that come out which are highly recognised by the Academy, but generally, uh, yeah. It's, and, and everything's become so reliant on CGI as well. That's been a lot. And I think motion capture is, is taking over. I love motion capture. That's that's the, the greatest new thing in film, really. But the CGI is, you know, it's been there for a few years now. And I think people are sort of tiring of it. And I think going back to these sort of films would be, would be a good step. And it would be a bold step, but I think. Um, mainstream audiences need something different, personally. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I, I was gonna say, like, when it comes to uh, slower films, like Blade Runner twenty forty nine, that, that's a lot. In terms of like the pacing, it's, I mean, I think it's paced really well, but it's a lot slower than most films. It it doesn't have a huge amount of action. Yeah, I mean, it's two hours forty five minutes. It's, it's very long. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's got a couple of, it's got some action sequences, but it's more of a, a visual film than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame it bombed. I think audiences, just some people didn't understand. Like, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, it's so slow, it's so boring. It's like, well, you kind of missed the point, you know? Like. <laughs> no, no, I, I like this scene, though, like where Michael basically says, um, Oh yeah, you know, get him out here, like you know, because I mean, this is where he meets Apollina, like who he'll, he'll marry, and unfortunately, something will ha happen to her later. But like, you know, kind of oh. makes a deal with this guy. Fabrizio. Huh. It's interesting seeing Michael kind of take on a different life, you know, hiding away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
se llama Miguel Corleone. Se llama Miguel Corleone. No, it's interesting that he makes a deal. He basically says, you know, like I know you, you I know, I know what you're thinking, but you know, I, I, you know, I'm a powerful man. You know, I can, I can look after your daughter, give her like a good future, like all that, like you know. Yeah. Why not? Fifty-three minutes. Fuck me. <laughs> Mm. Well, she is a beautiful girl. Yes. Vitaly. I mean, you know, it's funny because the Sicilians are kind of larger than life. <coughs> but what's funny as well, like when I was there, is like the the Sicilians, like when they get into fights with each other, they just, you know, they keep going on and on and on and on at each other. And it's, it's kind of funny. Like, they're like, hey, I let that out. Whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> the Italians are very vocal and very emotional. They, they don't, they're not the type of people to hold back on, on, on in their emotions in an argument. They will, they will make you know how they feel and they scream it to the world. I mean, that isn't a judgment. It's, it's just an observation. It's the way they are. I mean, uh, it's just a, a different cultures, but this is interesting how, uh, you know, he he really falls for this girl. <laughs> he likes her. They, they love their uh, their food as well. That's a big part of it. Uh, Italian and Sicilian cultures, the food and all that. And, uh, and I have to say, Sicilian food is, is lovely. I love Sicilian food. Like, um, I mean, uh, definitely, uh, you know, like th their chocolate and stuff is great and, you know, their pastries and things and, you know, their food, like pizza and pasta and stuff and, you know, ice cream, like, Sicilians definitely know how to make food. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, no, that, that, that's an interesting scene as well, like, where he gives her the necklace or whatever and... Charmer. You know, he, start, he starts to bond with her, like, you know, she likes him and he likes her, and you know, it was meant to be. Yes, I mean, wow, she's a stunning girl. <laughs> yeah, I love that it's just the music. And the shots, there's no dialogue. Because sometimes you, you don't need dialogue to convey what's going on. And, you know, I like that. Yeah. And I like the fact that you see them, like, together, like, walking together, like, eating together, like... Walking together? Yeah. Walking together? Oh, wait, that was coming a little later. <laughs> well, you did say they like their food, and they do have the recipe for babies, so... <laughs> <coughs> Just give it a stir. <laughs> Mix it up in a pot, making it spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sexy time. <laughs> yeah, it's a girl he was cheating on earlier in the film when she was at the wedding. <laughs> His Goomba, as they call it. <laughs> Sunny with fleas. Nice and sleazy does it. <laughs> oh, this scene's quite... It's quite uh, sad. When he finds Connie beaten up. Where is it? Well, that's interesting. We haven't really seen her very much. She hasn't had much character development yet. It's interesting to see her beaten up and bruised. Huh. So much for the happy wedding. Yeah, Carlo's just a prick. I mean, I mean that's the thing. Like, I mean, no, no real man would beat up his wife. You know, like yeah, marriage is an act of love and. 
you know, you, if you're going to marry, you should do it out of love. But clearly, the guy had an ulterior motive. <laughs> Not only that, but it's like, I mean, <coughs> you know, your parents, your parents always say to you, you know, never raise a hand to a woman. I'm, you know, they're right. I mean, yeah, this scene is really good, like, where he's, you know, he's just going after him, like, beating up Carlo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they recreated the scene The Simpsons, like, Marge versus the Mugger. Like, <laughs> Marge versus <laughs> the Mugger. Well, you're messing with the mafia there, man. He's a real slugger. Nobody's trying to stop him from beating him up. Yeah. Oh. Shit. Really going at it. I bet this was fun to film. I bet they had a great time filming the fight. Yeah. it. <laughs> It's a funny thing. James Khan is an Italian, um, but uh, I, I think he's got like a. I think he's got Irish ancestry. Like that line, like his accent kind of slipped. He's like, "Touch my sister again, I'll kill you." Like. <laughs> yeah. So when he's an elf, he's doing an American accent. <laughs> well, oh no 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 no, he's American. He is American. Yeah. No, I'm just saying he sounded a bit Irish, like when he said, you know, touch my sister again, I'll kill you. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do love their weddings. But James Khan's American, but I think like his uh, great great grandparents or something are like Irish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny because James Khan is an Italian, but he won a, the Italian of the Year award. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, do love it's, great. it's great that they show you like uh, Sicilian like traditions as well, like Sicilian culture and Sicilian yeah. weddings. I mean, what a place to get married as well. You know, <laughs> those views and everything would be amazing. It is a it is a beautiful country, I have to say. I say probably. The, I'd probably say it's the most beautiful country I've been to, um, just because of how how beautiful like it all is. I mean, a lot of it's very poor, but um, th there's definitely rich parts of it as well. Like, mm. That's slightly unfortunate, really. Yeah. Well, I mean the the Italian economy at the moment isn't very good because of well, Europe and the euro and all that. <laughs> mm kind of glad we are leaving with Brexit because I mean because uh, uh, if we signed up for the Euro, Euro our economy would be bust as well I think yeah I mean we, we were only just trying to crawl out of the recession I don't want to go into another one <laughs> oh sexy time <laughs> I can feel <laughs> Oh, it's nice that they there's actually genuine chemistry. <laughs> they actually love each other. Yeah. It's not like she's a bit on the side like Sonny. Is. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they try and give the illusion that it was love at first sight. Yeah. My God, he's a lucky man. What a beautiful woman, huh? Oh, see your titties. <laughs> Two more reasons to watch this scene. <laughs> well, I mean, Al Pacino back in the day, he was definitely a hit with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good-looking guy. I think actually... When he was making this film, he actually did have a relationship with uh, Diane Keaton. 
Ooh. But she didn't like that scene. <laughs> well, well, at least an actor. <laughs> Bye for the cameras. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I think Tom is one of my favorite characters because he's just kind of, you know, he, he's a very, like, you know, well, he, you know, he's, he's quite a nice guy, you know, he, he's not a shit stir like Sonny. Yeah. You kind of feel bad for Kay as well because Michael's been gone so long and, you know, she still, she still loves him. She still cares for him. Yeah. It's nice that we see Kay again. We haven't seen her for quite a few hours. <laughs> yeah. God, we've still got we've still got quite a long time to go. We've still got another hour. Still. Yeah. Uh, this scene's quite dramatic here. Coming up. Oh, she's pregnant as well, isn't she? God, she's skinny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Talia Shire, I think she was in Rocky as well. She plays Adrian. Well, that's her husband, isn't it? Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> that's <fun too. laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically Bafangul is fuck you in Italian. Oh, she's had enough of his shit. Yeah. You feel bad for her, like, you know. He's hysterical because of his shit. Oh my god. I mean, he's a dickhead. He... Oh, I think it's time to consider divorce. Yeah. I mean, beat, beating up a pregnant woman, like, it's just terrible. Oh, no. uh, that, that was pretty uncomfortable to watch, but that was very well done. So. Yeah, especially the way, like, you know, the door just closes and you don't see anything. You just hear it, like, him beating her up. I mean, what a scumbag beating up a pregnant woman. And, uh, and she knew. Wife, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, beating up his wife. And especially when she's pregnant, and not only that, but like she knew he was he was cheating on her because that woman was on the phone to to her saying, "Oh yeah, where's Sonny?" Like she knew that she was being cheated on. Like, yeah, and now he's gonna go over and kick his ass. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh yeah. This this film is very dramatic, you know. Beat the extenders any day of the week. <laughs> it's like uh, c- could you imagine like um Marlon Brando gets shot and it's like do 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 <laughs> someone should be an editor of that. <laughs> It was weird how The Simpsons kind of parodied it with the Who Shot Mr. Burns thing. I think the way he was shot was kind of like um, Vito Corleone. He was shot in the back quite a lot. But it was weird that it was the baby. I didn't know how I feel about that. Uh, the thing is... Uh... 
it's quite uh, dark. <laughs> quite violent. <laughs> A lot of blood. Oh my god. Well, he's dead. Yeah, I, I don't know why he, like, uh, kicks him there. Like, I mean, I mean, you shot him full of holes. Like, you know, I mean, you know he's going to be dead. Like, <laughs> well, Francis Ford Coppola, I think, said this scene's like a reference to Bonnie and Clyde where they get shot up in the end. Hmm. Yeah, a lot, lot of blood, a lot of squibs. <laughs> Nobody can survive that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Marlon Brando survived a, a few shots, but he was shot like two hundred times or something. <laughs> yeah, this is where he finds out Sonny's dead. I think the music's done well here. It's quite haunting, actually. And then, you know, the dawn comes down, like, Vito, he doesn't know what's... He doesn't know what's going on. I mean, and then we find out, of course, later that Carlo intentionally beat up Connie so he could lure Sonny into a trap. And and get him... Have him killed, you know. You, you feel feel bad for. Uh, I mean, you, you feel bad for like Vito and all that because I mean, even though Sonny is is hot headed, like you know, he shouldn't have you know been killed like that. Yeah, he didn't deserve to die. I mean, mm. God, nobody knows what Michael will do when he finds out. <laughs> He'll not be very happy. Sonny, he's dead. Oh, I think Marlon Brown's acting here is very good. I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah, you. I, I agree with you. Absolutely right. His acting, terrific. It's the worst thing for a parent to outlive their child. Yeah. I might, and my dad said it like you know, if your child dies before you, a part of you kind of dies as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, emotional words, very true. I mean, no, no one wants to outlive their own child. And even Tom, Tom seems kind of, kind of bereft about it. He wasn't Sonny's biggest fan, but he never would have wanted him dead. I mean, not, not only the fact is he dead, but he was the fact that he was murdered as well. That would make it even hurt. That would make it hurt even more. The fact that he was murdered. And yeah, I think Tom feels bad for Sonny because I mean, Sonny grew up with Tom. Like, like Tom was like. Tom was kind of like a stepbrother. Well, he wasn't a stepbrother, but he, Don Corleone took him in as like a foster kid. And he kind of grew up with Michael and the others. Yeah. Like, he's like a brother. Like, Sonny's like a brother to him. Now he's put the suit back on. He's he's recovered. And he's going to seek vengeance for the death of his son. Yes. Yeah. And then this guy from earlier... Oh. Oh. 
I think Brando's acting here is really good. Like, where he's like, oh, look how they massacred my boy. Like, look in his face. You, you, you can tell you, you know, he's, he's really deeply upset. He definitely deserved the Oscar for this film. Oh, yeah. I mean, that performance right there, you know, it just, it just shows also his character, how he's a three-dimensional character. He's not a soulless, emotionless, you know, leader. He, he has a soul. He has a heart. He loves his family. They're like, they're his world. And it's, it's, it's almost like his world is being ripped apart, you know? Yeah. I mean, funnily enough, Marlon Brando actually refused to accept the Oscar. Um, mm. I think he refused to accept the Oscar because, uh, like, like he he wanted Native Americans to be treated better in in the movie business. Like, be funnily enough, more uh, Roger Moore was the one who presented the Oscars. Like, oh, the Mar- Oscar goes to Marlon Brando, like, oh, the Godfather. <laughs> you could talk with the animals, run with the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And this is bad for Michael as well because he gets the news that Sonny is, you know, he's been murdered. Yeah, Syracuse, I've been there. Is that near Sicily? Oh, it's in Sicily. It's one of the cities there, I think. One of the, yeah. It's quite but, nice, actually. So in a way, Sicily is kind of like a little country within itself, really. Italy's kind yeah. of huge. <laughs> yeah, Sicily is like an island off Italy. I mean, the I mean, yeah, Sicily like the culture is a bit different. Like they they talk in like a different kind of like the language is a little bit different to Italian. Like like the dialects different, the accents a bit different, but yeah. I have to say though, like the way she's driving, like the all I have to say is the Sicilians are the worst fucking drivers ever. Like <laughs> when we were there, like they're just so bad. I mean, like I mean they, you know, they can't drive in their, you know, right right side of the road. Like they're driving really fast. Like they honk their horns a lot. I mean. We nearly had an accident in uh, Sicily, and uh, actually, when my uncle was over there, he got hit by a car because their driving there is just so bad. <laughs> and then their response is "Mata fangolo," you know. <laughs> What's Michael got? Has Michael got a bruise on his eye? No! Oh, shit. Killed his wife. That's a double whammy for Michael. I mean, he found out his brother's dead. Now his wife is being killed as well. Like, she was on screen all too briefly. I like I like this scene where the dawn arranges the uh, meeting of the five families. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going for a piss. No worries. Mm. Just in that scene there, where uh, Amalonia was killed tragically, as she's not been on screen very long, but it's just seeing how that will sort of mess with Michael's head because he's. Uh, Lost a lot of people, you know. He's, he's now lost his brother, you know. His the, the family's just falling apart. I mean, you know, his wife, his his sister's being beaten by her husband. His wife has been murdered. His son has been murdered. I mean, not his son, sorry, his brother has been murdered. You know, he's going to become emotionally withdrawn almost. And for Vito, well, much the same. Oh, it has, uh, as Jack alluded to earlier, no parent 
should outlive their child. It's it's the worst feeling ever. I mean, I, I can't imagine how they feel. It would, it would be awful. I mean, obviously, I, I have children of my own, so I can't really compare myself to them. But all I can say is, I would, I would hope that I would keep them safe. So, yeah. Interesting how they're sort of formulating a plan and a way to kind of, well, let's take their revenge really is the first thing to do. Uh, Always comes to money. There's never a point to anything unless they have money behind them, money that they can spare, money that they can use to whatever effect. And interesting how this scene takes place in a huge sort of meeting room. It's like a, it looks like a bloody board of directors meeting in sepia tone. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me anyway. But uh, of course, you know, the intention of the scene is much different. And um, Don, I'm surprised that Don Vito isn't more towards the sort of the head of the table, really, um, given that he is the Godfather. But you know, oh well. Uh, time goes by so slowly. <laughs> I love that song. That's a good one. Well, sorry about not saying much, guys. Sort of dozing off. It's quite late in the evening where I am. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Uh, I like this bit where he's saying, like, I mean, it's quite interesting how he manages to put all the bad stuff that's happened to him behind like being shot and his son being killed like most people say like you know fuck these guys but you know because he's a businessman and you know he's a godfather he manages to forgive them and you know you know broker a deal and like you know he basically says like you know, if my son would be, you know, struck, hit by a son of, uh, you know, bit of lightning, you know, or anything, like, he'll suspect people in this room, but... Yeah. You have to bring them up, you? you can't really put your trust in anyone, because you never know who's going to end up shooting you or your family next. Yeah. 
but I mean, like, but the thing is, he's a businessman as well, so he manages to, uh, you know, broker a peace. <laughs> broker things. And now, since his wife tragically died, Michael has to come back and potentially um, start all over again. Yeah, start this whole process all over again. Get, mar get married to Kay. <laughs> oh, 45 minutes to go. It has moved along very well, this film, actually. Quicker than I remembered it to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first time I watched, first few times I watched it, it was quite slow, but the more I've watched it, the quicker it's gone by. We got the next one. God, that'll be a test. That's even longer. That's three hours, 20 minutes. You can't physically release a film any longer than that. <laughs> well, it's definitely worth it, though. Oh, yeah, no, it's totally worth it. I mean, for a theatrical cinema screening, literally the longest you can do is, is three hours, 20 minutes. Because then you have to sit through 20 hours, not 20 hours, sorry, 20 minutes of adverts. You can't physically sit people down for longer than that. That would just be crushing. I mean, the same thing with Return of the King. You know, that, that was the theatrical cut that was released, which was three hours, 20 minutes. And I bet that was bloody long. <laughs> Uh, I think they have screen films that are longer than three hours twenty, but they have to have an intermission, like uh, like that film, the original Ben Hur. That's like four hours long. Like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, my goodness me. But it won like eleven Oscars, I think. Hmm. How many Oscars yeah. did this win, by the way? Sorry. How many Oscars did this film win? Uh, I think. Four or something like that. Which you know which ones they were. Best actor, best uh, picture. Um, I think best film score or something like that, and something else. Oh, no. Second one won even more. It won six Oscars. Woo! Best picture, I'm assuming. Yeah, and Coppola won best director as well. Yeah. Al Pacino should have won Best Actor as well. well yeah, unfortunately. especially for the second film. Yeah, no, he didn't win an Oscar for any of them, which I think is a fucking crime. Like, although, I mean, sorry. Although, on the flip side, at least for the second film, Robert De Niro got the Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, Rob De Niro deserved it, but I think Pacino deserved it even more because he's in the whole film. But I think De Niro definitely deserved it as well because he had to learn Italian. Like his whole part, he has to speak Italian, and he does a good job playing a young Vito. Mm. And it's interesting how the second film does that parallel narratives thing where it cuts between the past and the present. Yeah. No, I like that scene though, where he's walking with Kay. Like, you know, he's basically saying, "Look, I know I've been away a long time, but I still love you. I still want to make it work out." You know, and and he and he tells her that, "Yeah, I'm gonna be the new dawn." And she's like, "But she's like, you know, you said you didn't want to do this stuff." He's like, "Oh yeah, but you know, it'll only be for a few years. Like, I'll I'll try to make the business legitimate." <laughs> and look where that leads. Do you know why the third film took so long to make? Like, why there was such a long gap between the second and third? Um, well, Francis Ford Coppola said that he wanted to end the story with the second film, but um, he was kind of a bit strapped for money, and he decided, you know, he wanted to kind of finish off the story. So, um. Originally, it was gonna. It wasn't gonna be called Godfather Three. It was gonna be called The Death of Michael Corleone. Um, but the studio said that they wanted it to be called The Godfather Part Three, which I think makes more sense to be honest, because he's still the Godfather in the third one. Yep. Um that's less of a spoiler in the title than than the death of Michael Corleone. Yeah, 
I doesn't even he only dies at the very end of it, like the very last few frames. Yeah, exactly. I think Francis Ford Coppola did a very good job, though, with Godfather Three, considering he was only given six weeks to write a script. Like, Fran- like Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola wanted six months. The studio only gave him six weeks, and. You know, they wanted it out for Christmas of nineteen ninety and you know, I and for what for what he did, I thought he did a very good job and you know, I think I think some people like like over the years I think the third one's been appreciated uh more by people like like my uncle hated the third one but uh he rewatched it and he didn't think it was as bad and my mum didn't like the third one and she rewatched it with me a few years ago and she she really liked the third one as well. Like, yeah, I mean, I think the third one. Obviously, we will get to the third one at some stage, but I, I don't think it's really that bad at all. I don't, I don't get the hate for it. It's like when people hate on Return of the Jedi. Like some, some people think Return of the Jedi is shit. They're like, oh, it's terrible. It's like because the Ewoks. It's like, well, is that it? Like, really? <laughs> is that your only complaint? Like. It's it's kind of sad, like the way Tom's like, Michael's like, oh yeah, you, you can't be, can't be a uh, consigliere anymore. Like, basically having a new changeover, he's starting fresh. And that's this is when sort of Michael, I guess, starts to take over, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think Al Pacino's performance is really good because at the start he's kind of this shy village boy like you know he's a young man he's he's, he's a shy college uh, uh you know boy and and then like slowly over the film like we see him progress into this kind of uh and by this point in the film he's become a, a you know he's becoming a ruthless sort of leader of the mafia you know i think al, al pacino like uh said that in the movie um he said um, he wanted uh, to peel back the layers slowly, like when he was making the film. When... Yeah. I think that was right thing to do as well. I think seeing the sort of a slow descent into madness was the the right to go for Michael, and because then you really see every inch of his character completely change after those horrible incidents. Yeah. And you can see he's pissed off. Like he doesn't like, like like Fredo's basically into these prostitutes, and he doesn't like you know Michael. He's not interested in any of that, you know. So Fredo's a bit of a pig. Yeah. <laughs> At least working for Mo Green now. Remotely. <laughs> I'm not sure it was like Mo from The Simpsons. <laughs> Mo from EastEnders. <laughs> I think part of this is also Fred trying to kind of be like Sonny. Trying to trying to be, you know, the hot head, the guy who's always like in control and always you know, reacting. And, uh, you know, I don't think he quite matches up to Sonny, but... <laughs> He tries, you know. He will try, of course. I think he's also trying to prove himself to Michael. He's like, "Hey, I can take care of the situation," you know. How old is Michael by this point? I think he's in his thirties. Yeah, so, yeah. We, we're a few years ahead now because he's obviously he's come back. But... Yeah, I mean, I think it's set over like five years, like five or ten years. No, it's interesting that he wants to become more legitimate. Like, he'll have a casino in Las Vegas. You know, it's not um, illegal. And then in the third one, we see he wants to go even more legitimate. Like he invests money in the Vatican Bank, 
you know, to basically wash away the crimes of the past. Like, like he always wants to become legitimate, like, you know. Yeah. I think, I think also, yeah, you're right. You know, to put the Corleones on the map, you know, to be truly legitimate, but obviously due to various things, that does not work out. Yeah. I mean, this guy, Mo Green, he's based off uh, Bugsy Siegel, who actually created Las Vegas. He was a gangster. Um, uh, but he, he created Las Vegas, and Mo Green's based off him. I like how we've, we've seen Michael change over the course of this film. By this point, he probably sort of cemented himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite interesting. He doesn't want to sell his casino. Like you know, he feels like he's being insulted. You know. <laughs> there are some great sets as well. The production design. Uh, really shows. I mean, they, the budget was well spent, and the the sets terrific. I mean, this film is genuinely a work of art, and I totally take my hat off to Francis Francis Ford Coppola. You know, this is a very difficult story to get and uh, did a marvelous job. Yeah, and he fought two for Neil to to make the film that he wanted to, and I'm glad he did, you know, it paid off, like, because, like you said, it was a nightmare to make this film, but... Oh, <laughs> Give me a C, C! Talk to the Don, And he will, though, in the second one. He will. Oh. I mean, you, you kind of feel bad for, you know, Fredo because, you know, you know, he's kind of, like, like he says in the second film, he was always stepped over, like, you know, like everybody in the family thought he was stupid and, like, you know, thought he was a dimwit and, you know, he kind of resented that. He resented, you know, like, being thought of in that way, yeah. And then, and then, and then, when he fucks up, like you know, well, uh, Michael, uh, he takes him on in. <laughs> oh, it was long. We've only got half an hour left. I like this scene where where Vito's talking to his uh, son and, and Michael in the. Uh, Garden. Mm. Was given giving him advice. Love the children are happy, boy. <laughs> yeah. Certainly were. He would have loved the wedding. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think, you know, this and On the Waterfront are definitely two of Brando's best performance. He's also great in 
He's also in Apocalypse Now as the Colonel. He's great in that as well. No, it's a lovely scene. It's a very well constructed and very well acted and directed. I think the uh, prosthetic is really good as well for for uh, for Vito. Like, um, uh, like I mean, Marlon Brando I think was only in his forties when he did this. So, Marlon. like, yeah. The, pros- the prosthetic, like the makeup, um, is very good. Like he looks like an eighty-year-old. And got the music again. Sometimes that's all you need: just the music and the ambience. And it's amazing how well those two elements can tell a story. I like the scene like where he's basically saying like you know he wanted better for Michael he wanted him to you know become you know become legitimate like become something better than this because he didn't want him in the mafia you know he wanted him to live his own life yeah your time man It is, I think it's really well acted by Pacino and Brando. Mm. You do believe that they are father and son. I mean, now Pacino said, like, when they were uh, making The Godfather, they were all kind of um, inspired by Marlon Brando because he was, you know, he was seen as the greatest actor of his generation. And a lot of people say he's one of the one of the greatest, if not the greatest, actors of all time, and like apparently, like him and Pacino, like Pacino and all, were like kind of like starstruck by him, like when they were making the film. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I love that shot of him outside with his painting. You know, he just looks so relaxed. You never guess it was somebody in the mafia. I like the scene with the, with with Michael's son is well his well Vito's grandson like quite a nice scene where they're playing together like Your grandson isn't it yeah it's Michael's son that he's playing with his grandson oh even though the the, the boy's dad is uh, not a prick. <laughs> The grandson is nice. Oh, he's scaring him a bit. Oh. Oh my God. I think they parody this in the Simpsons as well, like where Moe's with Maggie. He like puts like an orange in his mouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has to babysit Maggie. Isn't he? Yeah, this I, I really like this scene. Like he's just playing with his grandson. Like you wouldn't see this in the movie now. Like most producers would probably just say, oh, "Cut it out. It's unnecessary or whatever." Like, but no, this is character growth. Also, more importantly, is because this is where he he sort of he dies, doesn't he? Yeah, he's just he's old. He has a heart attack. Yeah. And then the kid, the kid thinks he's uh, playing. He doesn't know he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's almost tragic how 
he was just literally just playing with his grandson then the boy the boy completely unaware of what's going on i mean yeah. that oh i thought i think that was it was more sudden i think that that was what made it more tragic yeah well at least he died with his family around him that's all i'll say like you know yeah i mean he could have had a much much worse death than what other people had like i mean his son you know sonny had, had a horrible death <laughs> yeah could have had cancer or something like that. that would have been worse <laughs> yeah No, but it, it, it's um, it's interesting as well. Like all the uh, other people from like the five families, all the other gangsters pay their respects to him as well. Like they pay respects to the dawn. Yeah, they have the statue, the Corleone statue. Yeah, I mean, obviously he has a very grand headstone because he's a. Rich man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he's got the money, money, money. Must be funny in a rich man's world. I like this, like, the way, like, Michael's just kind of sitting there, like, you know, it's like not, I mean, I mean, he was already the godfather, but now that his dad's dead, he truly is the godfather now because he's the only one left really that you know his dad's gone now so and he Fred, really is Fredo's in no fit state to take over so yeah he is the only one that he, that can yeah take over yeah and you know it's interesting as well like how he arranges the deaths of you know like he, he manages to arrange the hits on the heads of the five families He's kind of, uh, I think he's, he's, I think he's been prepared for it over the past few months of, you know, what's happened to him and with his wife and everything. And he's lost a lot of people <laughs> to get to this point. In this scene here, like, he knows that this guy's betrayed him because, like, Marlon Brando, you know, when he's with him in the garden, he says, oh, the guy approaches you to arrange a meeting, he, he's the, you know, he's the one who's, uh, you know, he's going to betray you. Like, yeah. Just be aware. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> There's a lot to do in Brooklyn. Yes. No sleep till Brooklyn. I will sleep when I am dead. Oh, wait. <laughs> He's sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as the say as the old proverb and saying goes. Oh, I guess like does that saying kind of stem from the fact that a lot of the uh, bodies once disposed of were just chucked in the canal or something, you know? But where does that saying come from? <laughs> well, um, well, they said that earlier in the film when uh, Luca Brazzi dies. Like in this, like they say, he sleeps with the fishes. I think it means they dumped his body in a river, like. Oh. Actually, the uh, baby they used um, for the scene, Francis Ford Coppola said it's actually um, Sophia Coppola, who's in the third one. <laughs> oh, he used his daughter. He managed to get a lot of cameos of his family in there, which, you know, why not? <laughs> Yeah, I like seeing the culture of all this as well. How they, how they do these things. 
you know, this is an interesting scene where, like, uh, we see, like, when, when, you know, it's like a, you know, he's basically, like, you know, he basically says, do you renounce Satan and all this? He's like, I do. But at the same time, all these horrible things are happening. This was approaching the, uh, the end now. Last 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh. It's gone by quite quickly, though. It has, actually. It's been a very good experience to rewatch this film. I actually pr- prefer it a lot more watching it the second time than the first. I mean, it is a, a classic film. Cinema. It's quite interesting because in the third one he becomes very religious. You know, he's trying to repent for all his sins. What? Oh. A long film. <laughs> well, uh. No, but I, th- I think this is one of the most iconic scenes in the film as well, like where the baby's being christened and. And yeah, it's like it's quite a it's quite a juxtaposition. Like it's kind of ironic. Like the priest is like Michael, do you believe in God? You know, do you renounce Satan and all this? But at the same time, he's getting his men to kill all these, you know, gangsters, like the heads of the five families, so he can gain complete control. Yeah, he's going to die soon. Satan. It's weird because he can't the devil. Can't <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, he's committing part. sins. Yeah. Of this in the, the juxtaposition, but they do a yeah. but they do something similar in the third film with the opera sequence. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. But how like the, the, the beginning of the film had a wedding, and at the end of the film has a christening, but it's <laughs> I say, as you say, it's done in such a juxtaposed way, which makes it pretty, pretty weird and interesting. It's symbolic. I think it's symbolic because you know he, he's saying he renounces Satan and all this, but at the same time, he's getting his man to commit all these like, you know, heinous acts, violent acts. You know, mm. it's like it, it's like he doesn't really renounce Satan. You know, he just. You know, 
It's just going to say up. Yeah. Oh, grandson. It's interesting, like, uh, talking about celebrations, like, Fans for Coppola said, and he's kind of right, I didn't notice this, but all three Godfather films begin with, like, a celebration. Like, the first one is the wedding, the second one is his son's communion, and the third one is uh, um, a family, um, I think it's a family uh, meal they're having at the start, like a family gathering, like. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, well, didn't like him enough. <laughs> <laughs> no monkey business. Like, well, you fuck with Michael, you're going to end up dead. Yeah. That's the thing about Michael, he's always kind of two steps ahead. He's a very clever, a clever man. Very unusual in that regard, he, you know, watching everybody's every move as much as he can. And he's got good instincts at knowing, you know, who to trust. And, you know, he knows who's who's actually likely to betray him. He's got, he's got a... He's of his father, I think, as well. Yeah. I think he needs to kind of always be... Have, have his wits around him, because... He doesn't know who's going to come after him next. You know, he's the head of a a criminal organization. He doesn't know who's going to betray him. Like, his best friend could turn around tomorrow and, like, just decide to kill him so he could become the boss. Like, you know. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And it drives him mad, <laughs> is, the, is the bottom line of it. This film is basically just the start of the whole thing. I mean, God, wait till you see part two. I mean, that, that that just really escalates things to a whole new level for him. Yeah. Mo Green. Mo Green. He's basically saying to Carlo, you're fucked, so, you know, you... you you fucked around in my sister. You know, he knows that he knows he knows Carlo plants on his death. And he's gonna well, get his revenge. And he tries to reassure him. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to kill you. You know, don't worry. Like, <laughs> Slow me. <laughs> you, you, you know, you can tell he's shit scared. Like, clearly, Carlo does not know the Mafia very well. He wants to be in on it, but he clearly has no idea how it works. <laughs> I mean, if he wanted to be in the family business, he shouldn't have got Sonny killed. Yeah. It was his mistake. Yeah, that's the wrong decision. Cost him his life. And he shouldn't have beat his wife, you know. Sonny. And it's interesting he asks him like who approached him, like he's trying to find out who his enemies are. Yeah. As the saying goes, you know, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says in the second film. <laughs> My father always told me, Keep your friends close but your enemies closer. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, you, you can tell he, he hates Carlo. Action. The end of him. I think it's quite uh, that you don't actually technically see all of the strangling. It's mostly covered up by smashed glass and also the fact that the camera is quite close on to his feet as he's sort of struggling. A really good yeah. shot, though, I'd say. It was, yeah, no, and, it, and it makes it look sort of darker in tone. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, talking about the, I haven't mentioned the music much, but yeah, I mean, the soundtrack is just amazing. I, one of my favorite movie soundtracks, like the whole score by Nino Rota and Carmine Coppola. Like, <coughs> I mean, I think the soundtrack for the second one is definitely one of my favorite movie soundtracks ever. Like, I mean, Soundtrack here is very good, but the second one is just amazing as well. You know, Tell Carlo's dead. I mean, I'm surprised she's so upset considering how much of a piece of shit he was. Yeah. She knows that Michael ordered the death of him. Yeah. I mean, I think even though he was a piece of shit, she didn't want him to die because it's still her husband. And, you know, she, she has to think about her kids, you know. Yeah. So she should look at it in terms of that. She would have been, been in a lot of danger. She could he would have died if she'd stayed with him. She basically becomes a wreck in the second film as well. She sleeps with all her men, doesn't really care about her kids. Then in the third film, she just kind of accepts Michael for what he is and helps him out in the family business. Like she's she she has a lot of kids, doesn't she? Yeah. I mean, well, Italians have a lot of kids. Oh, I mean, you know, she pumps them out. I, I like this bit here. He's like, oh, yeah, she's hysterical. He's trying to convince Kay that, you know, he didn't have anything to do with it. True. Don't ask me about my business. I think, I think Al Pacino is quite good there where he's like, you know, enough. Like, you know. There's one thing you should never do to, to a mafia man. It's ask him about his business. It's like, yeah, I, I sell ice creams. Wink, wink. There's one time you can ask me after that, no. I think she's she's starting to doubt him a little bit in this, but I think it, obviously it obviously it escalates in the second film. But you know, this is kind of a bit of concern, you know. She doesn't want to marry a murderer, but <laughs> yeah, and she just buys his lie. He's like, "Oh, did you did you you know did you know is it true?" And he's like, "No." Yeah. She kind of you know she just buys it. I don't think she wants to accept the fact that. He had, you know, Carlo killed. She just kind of wants to, you know. She, she still thinks, you know, that her life with Michael can like still work out. Mm. Although, needless to say, she's sort of doubtful, still a little bit, you know, unsure. But at the same time, she she has feelings for him. So, yeah, it's, you know, there's something there. This this shot's really great, like, you know, where we see them, like, you know, he kisses Michael's hand. 
you just see, notice that he's changed a lot since she last saw him? Yeah. I think she kind of realizes here that he was lying. And this this shot's great here, like you know, to end the film, like the door closes, like. Yeah. Well, that was a fantastic film. Yeah. <laughs> I think that deserves a huge round of applause. It is fantastic. Oh my god, it was very long, but it was so good. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it needed to be that long, considering the amount of story there is in it. Like... <clears throat> I mean, how do you sum up all of that? <laughs> it's it's really quite amazing how they told the story. It's a powerful piece of cinema. But, again, wait till you see part two, because part two is even better. <laughs> I mean... I know, and, 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 and that's quite an accomplishment considering the first Godfather, a lot of people consider the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest films ever made. Like, so it's, it's quite an accomplishment to say the second one's even better, but yeah. Yeah, and, I, and the second one is even longer. It's, it's 20 minutes longer, but it manages to feel brisk, just as brisk as the, the first one. Yeah. I mean, for me, everything about this film works. Like, like the acting is excellent. The cinematography is excellent. The shots are great. The story is great. The characters are great. And you know, like Marlon Brando as the Godfather, he's just, you know, he, you know, he, he's excellent. Al Pacino just, you know, knocks it out of the park. You know, I mean, like I said, it, it was really this trilogy that, and especially the second film that made him my like favorite actor, and. You know, he de definitely deserved an Oscar for for the second film, but I mean, he did win his Oscar eventually, which I'm glad about, but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great film, and it's a great, you know, chap, you know, beginning chapter to the trilogy. I mean, you know, and um, I mean, you know what? You could have ended the story here, like, but, you know, I'm kind of glad that they made the second film, and I'm glad I'm glad that you know, we got to see more of it, and you know, I love all three of them. I love the whole trilogy, and uh, even the third one, which you know, we'll do a commentary on that uh, someday. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, despised by many, but yeah, um, it's you know, it, it for me, it, it's still very good. It's probably the weakest of the three, but it's still very good, and I, I think that. This series is, you know, it is one of the greatest trilogies ever made. You know, there is no question about that. I, I would be lying if I said that it wasn't. I mean, it, even even with the third one, I think the three films work well together as a trilogy. But yeah, they're all different um, in their own way. The films, well, they're not just the same. You know. Yeah, and uh, also I think the picture quality here is amazing. Actually. Um, actually, Steven Spielberg's company restored it. Francis Ford Coppola asked him to restore it, so um, they did a really good job. Um, I mean, it looks great in HD. It looks fantastic, and uh, I mean, the picture is very clean. Um, it looks great on Blu-ray. I definitely recommend upgrading to Blu-ray. Um, you know, if if you want to see these films in the best quality that you can. I mean, there there is 4K now, but I still say, like, you know, yeah. Blu-ray is, you know, the, it's I mean, the definite... Yeah. yeah. In, in that last sort of message uh, in the credits, um, it said that it was digitally sort of restored within 4K, but they, and then they obviously downscaled it to 1080 for the Blu-ray. So I think there will be a 4K at some point of the entire trilogy. Yeah. Um, when, when 4K actually takes off, but that's another story for another day, but I, I don't know if it will. But I mean, yeah, I mean, as for the Godfather, I mean, if I had to give it a reading out of ten, it it'd be a ten definitely. I think it it deserves it. I mean, it's a cinematic landmark, it changed cinema, and it's a it's a fantastic film. I mean, and it's not you know just a gangster film. It's about family. It's about the family drama. You know, a lot of you know great 
so many iconic scenes and quotable lines from the movie and it's a masterpiece it definitely is it is a masterpiece of cinema and it'd be great if we had more films like this nowadays instead of you know constant superhero movies and action movies but you know i mean there are some great filmmakers out there now who are, who are doing a really good job like matt reeves and uh, Denny Villeneuve and all that, so Dennis Villeneuve or whatever, but like... Um, Go on, yeah. Denny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree with you, and to be honest, um, I felt that, you know, having watched it the second time, I appreciate it a lot more, I think, because a few years ago, I don't know whether, whether I wasn't in the right headspace when I watched it, or... But this is a... This is a fantastic film, and, you know... I think I, you know, I gave it a nine in my original review. I would have to move my rating up to a ten, so I may have to re-review this film because I don't think my initial first viewing uh, judgment was fair. So I will probably have to re-review The Godfather and give it a ten out of ten because it is a it is a fantastic film, and you know it's it's storytelling one hundred and one and it's character development one hundred and one and Okay, yeah, they had to do it in three hours, but it's a big story. There's a lot that happens in it. And, you know, yes, the film is a, it is paced quite slowly, but it's, you know, it's meant to be. It's meant to be paced slow. And I think the second one is even better. And that's, that just goes to show there are a lot of talented people who made this film work. Um, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola is the director as well. He, he put this whole thing together and it's, it's a work of art. It really is, and I'm I'm amazed, and I agree with you. This is definitely it's not my favorite trilogy, of course, because that you know goes to Lord of the Rings. But yeah, which you know, to be fair, that's a great trilogy as well. That is a stunning trilogy too. So <laughs> can't blame you for saying that number one. Yeah, I mean, cause that that just means more to me personally because it inspired me. But I mean, The Godfather is still wow. I mean, it is it is still one of the greatest trilogies ever, made, and it is one of the they are three very unique films, and this first one is a great beginning to the story. Um, and yeah, I, I can't sum it up any better. It's a masterpiece, and it's it's full of thrills and and a lot of emotional drama and conflict and you know assault. And you know, you just you just get wrapped up in it. I just I completely see why you think this. A, a great film I completely see it now and when I watched it three years ago I don't think I fully appreciated it so I'm glad I rewatched it no this was fun is there anything else you want to say before we uh, we close off um just um uh j just have to say that um there's an offer you can't refuse like <laughs> yeah film you can't refuse <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, no, I mean, it's been great doing this commentary. I'm, I'm really glad that that we finally did a commentary on this, and it, and um, I'll definitely check out your reviews. I'll, I'll leave a comment on your Godfather review, um, whenever you do that. Um, and it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure re watching and commentating uh, over this with you. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought. It we we talked about it for so long, and I had to obviously my original copies of of sell, but uh, I've got them back now, and I don't intend to get rid of them again. So <laughs> that was a bit of a boo boo on my part, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> so uh, I guess all that's left to say is thank you guys all for watching, and good night, and thanks to the the one viewer <laughs> who is <laughs> who is currently watching this. Um, we will be uh next time commentating on the godfather part two which the sequel which came out two years after this uh, which is considered to be even better and to some the greatest film ever made and it's certainly one of the greatest films ever made in my book um, so yeah stay tuned for that and then we will also do a, a commentary on godfather part three as well when we get to that um so for now Thank you and good night. I'm Mr. Titus 11. This is Jack. See ya. <laughs>